Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. As we were planning this event, we thought long and hard about what the most relevant issues of today are. One big topic that's been on our minds, and probably yours too, is the future of work, how, when, and where we do our jobs and serve our customers. Of course, this how, when, and where we work has radically shifted this year because of COVID. The reality setting in for us is that our lives likely aren't going back to pre-pandemic status anytime soon, perhaps for years. Our behavior as a society has changed. Today, we're going to talk about how companies have gotten creative in 2020 to fuel future growth. Welcome back to those of you who joined our last broadcast, and welcome to all of our new faces here today. We appreciate your feedback from our last Bella Canvas Live event, and we're so glad you enjoyed the content. For anyone who missed it, we talked about how to sell street fleece and make a profit from this high margin apparel category. You can check out our prior episodes anytime by streaming them from our website at bellacanvas.com slash live or catch them on our Bella Canvas YouTube channel. Before we dive in, a few things to note. We'll be live for about 45 minutes, including the Q&A portion at the end. If a question pops into your head at any time, shoot it over to us in the comments and we'll answer it at the end. If you need to leave us, don't worry, we'll send you a link so you can replay this webinar later. On a large scale, we've all been affected by how the pandemic altered the way we work over the past six months. Whether you're a business leader, owner, or salesperson, you've had to adapt to remote work and likely virtual events. We bet you've also been thinking about what the future of work looks like as we head into 2021. Working from home has impacted certain behaviors that will have a lasting effect on the promotional products industry. For example, the work from home trend and the casualization of work wardrobes has only accelerated with the pandemic. In addition, with trade shows canceled for now and most in-person meetings happening over Zoom, the way we network and interact has shifted. This year, companies are spending their promo dollars differently with work from home kits and virtual event swag coming to the forefront. The way we work, engage with clients, and present products and solutions in the future is still somewhat up in the air. Experts predict that our current structure will continue for the foreseeable future, even the next two to three years. So we need to change and adapt the way we work if we wanna thrive. Let's look at a few stats about the future of work. 88% of us want to return to our offices and 56% of us want a flexible schedule, according to Gensler's US Work From Home Survey 2020. However, the workplaces that we return to need to allow for social distancing while also creating community. When asked about the most important reasons to come into the office, people overwhelmingly chose activities that focus on what's hardest for them to do at home, socialize and connect. The top four reasons include attending scheduled meetings with colleagues, socializing with coworkers, getting impromptu face-to-face -face time, and being part of their corporate uh, community. 40% of workers also listed access to technology and the ability to focus on their work as top reasons to come into the office. I know that I love to. To delve further into the future of work, today we have two incredible guests lined up for you to provide real world insights about how work and workplaces will look in a post COVID-19 world, why flexibility and hybrid work arrangements will be our next normal, and how to lead and grow your business during uncertain times. First up, Bella Canvas VP Marketing Summer Berry talked with Ashley Wong Soy, founder and CEO of Gemnote, to learn how a millennial run corporate gifting company got ahead of the COVID curve by providing solid solutions to clients who canceled in person events. Then you'll hear from Sandeep Mithrani, the new CEO of flexible office space provider WeWork, to get his take on how COVID has hugely disrupted the traditional concept of office space and what we can expect to see in the near future. Our first guest, as I mentioned, is a young entrepreneur in the promotional space who's managed to lead and grow her company during a pandemic. In fact, she hasn't laid off a single team member and has actually hired new employees to support her growth. Ashley is founder and CEO of Gemnote, a company that provides swag and high-end corporate gifts. She took a look at how business was shifting to remote work and virtual events early on and provided her clients with solutions to help them achieve marketing, ROI, and sales goals. She'll explain how her company pivoted successfully during a pandemic and also weigh in on how current working conditions have created new promotional opportunities, if you know where to look. Hey, Ashley, how's it going? 
Hi, Summer. Nice to see you. Well, I'm really excited um, that you are on the Bella Camps Live today. Um, for those of you guys that aren't familiar with Gemnote, you should definitely check them out. Um, as a marketer myself, I'm so impressed with your guys' branding and social and just how you overall differentiate yourself in the space. So um, I was super curious to kind of hear how COVID has affected your business. So how have things been going for you guys? Yeah, so when coronavirus unfolded in the country, it was, you know, earlier in the year around March, we were definitely a little bit worried about how business would be, especially because it was affecting the economy pretty negatively. And so we actually did see a dip in our April revenue, right? I'm just coming off right of the news in March, people going remote, um, not going into the office. There was just a lot of uncertainty. And that was worrisome. A lot of our clients were canceling their annual conferences that they spent upwards of multi-million dollars on um, and their virtual, I mean, their, their events. And so we were a little bit worried. We didn't have any canceled orders, but there were a lot of delayed orders. And so we sat down with our customers and we decided, okay, we got to get creative with this swag. It's already in production. Some of them are already, you know, fulfilled. What are we going to do about this? right around March when we started to have these conversations with their clients, they started to say, okay, we have a budget and we're going to allocate the budget from all the physical aspects of an event or a conference, like the venue, the you know catering, the event production teams to swag. So we're going to ship out a bunch of swag kits or just in terms of you know VIP gifting, all of that to the attendees and have that experience be inside their home while still being able to you know uh, do the the workshops that they had and do you know hear the panel speakers. So in your outreach to your existing kind of core customer base, were you pretty proactive about proposing sort of like a new way to allocate budgets? Yeah, so we actually first tested it out with SEO. So we wrote a few blog posts about it and just to see what that market felt like. Like, are they open to doing swag packs coupled with the virtual events, right? Um, and then we started talking to our customers directly and saying, hey, we wrote a blog post about this. This is our expert advice on how to move forward and still engage with your customers remotely and still get that generation of demand because otherwise it would be a lost year for them in terms of being able to acquire more customers. And I think you said um, for SEO, your blog post topped on like the first page of Google, right? Yeah, so for work from home, we were sort of the first company to do work from home kits as a keyword. And we're still number one on that. A lot of keywords that we have been optimizing for are, you know, on the first page of Google for sure. And then some of them are one and two, which is exciting. So yeah. virtual event swag, corporate gift swag, all of that. Um, we've been working really hard to try to capture that audience um, with good content. So helpful educational content that we can, you know, find a solution for them ultimately. Internally, how has your business shifted? Have you kind of adapted anything to better meet your customers' needs during this time? Yes, so internally, I just wanna say that I am so proud of the fact that we have not had one layoff since COVID started, which to me personally is a huge accomplishment for this year. Um, actually we've hired people because of the demand that we're seeing that everybody cannot do it themselves at the office anymore. So they are having third parties like Gemnote you know, curate, source it, and then distribute it. So I'm really proud that we've been able to maintain our team, but also have it grow, right, and add people to the team. So it, it's affected us in, in a positive way, for sure. So what sort of gifts are really resonating with your customers right now? I think apparel has always been pretty popular with people, um, you know, for offsite team offsites or just overall rebrands, everybody needs apparel. And, and that's sort of like the basis of swag, if you will, mm -hmm. or merch. But what we've seen now is that it's more popular than ever because people are in their sweatpants and they're in sweatshirts, just like you are. Um, I haven't worn jeans in like three months. And so, you know, we're seeing a lot of people get very, very comfortable um, at home and, and on Zoom calls. But what I think is great is because companies are sending, you know, apparel 
to their employees, they get to rep it on Zoom calls, right? So if you're talking to a customer, they have the logo of you know their company on their shirt or their sweatshirt or their hoodie kind of thing. So that's always great for branding purposes. I know for us, when we talk to our customers and we have things even on our desk that are like it's a mug or a tumbler that we want to sell because we think it's great, it's you know great testimony to be able to say, I use this every single day or I wear this because it's so comfortable. So that's really exciting. I, I totally agree. I feel like using Zoom as an opportunity for almost product placement is is just so smart. And it's like, you have less face time with customers than if you would like go into a meeting, but there's also kind of more opportunities for that like organic sort of plug that goes a long way. What's your view on how the industry will change the next two years? I know you might not have a great answer for, for that, but if you had to kind of predict the future. I'm great at predicting. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I think this isn't the the virus isn't going to go away in two years. I don't think it's going to you know go back to normal as we've seen it you know before March. In two years, I think we're going to see a lot of what we see now this quarter, which is that everyone is sort of settling into this is going to be our life for the next one or two years. So you're going to have to lean on companies like Gemnote to help you curate, customize it, distribute it, even warehouse the items. Right. So fulfillment being a big part of that sort of like one-stop solution. So you are a very young and inspiring entrepreneur. So I would just love to get your take um, from a leadership perspective. How are you sort of thinking about team morale and being sort of a cheerleader for your team going forward and you know through these uncertain times yeah so i think being able to um talk to your team and communicate that's really important um perhaps maybe more traditional companies that are like top down you know very political or there's a lot of hierarchy in the team it's hard to know what the leaders are thinking so i think communication is super important we talk on slack all the time um, our team you know we do uh, monthly town halls we do check-ins every week just making sure that we get a, a good pulse on the whole team and the morale so community communication for sure. And I think with the growth that we're seeing, um, YC always has this quote where it's like, growth um, is the cure for everything. It gets people pumped up. Like they want to wake up in the morning and help clients because there's so much growth. Um, so I think that is a huge motivating factor is people just want, or at least our team definitely just wants to help our customers um, have creative solutions to their swag and corporate gifting needs. Uh, so just being able to communicate that with them and then being firm, I think not wavering in the mission and the vision of the company is also really important because if we were to say okay the economy is struggling we need to shift completely to super low cost items things that will go straight into the trash but we just want to make it transactional like volume is the game I think that would be a disservice to us and our DNA as as a company so I think sticking to your mission um, and making sure that the employees know what that is I think that's really important I mean, you've done such a great job of positioning yourself and pivoting, and you really are a bright spot in an economy where a lot of businesses are struggling. So congratulations for that. And thank you so much for coming on and kind of sharing your, your little pieces of wisdom. Um, everyone should definitely check out Gemnote and what they're doing. Um, there's so much learnings that you guys can take from um, the kind of model that they set up. So. Thank you again, Ashley. Yeah. I hope to talk to you really soon. Yes, for sure. Bye. Bye, everyone. It's so encouraging to hear about GemNote's success and Ashley's take on how other distributors can pivot as well. Next up, Bella Canvas President Chris Blakesley had the pleasure of speaking with Sandeep Mithrani, the CEO of WeWork, in an exclusive interview. Sandeep probably spends more time than anyone thinking about the future of work, particularly how and when people will return to office spaces. No doubt it's going to look different than before. WeWork is a leading workspace company and one of the world's largest real estate management businesses. Sandeep joined WeWork in February of 2020, just weeks before the widespread shelter at home orders hit. 
With his 30 year career as a top real estate chief executive, Sandeep is the perfect person to talk about the concept of flexibility and how, when, and where we wanna work in the future. That includes creating workspaces that promote safety, collaboration, and community. Well, hi Sandeep, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Chris. How are you doing? I am, uh, all things considered, I'm doing great. Interesting mm-hmm. world we're living in. Sandeep, I, I'm guessing that a lot of our uh, participants today know, uh, I've heard about WeWork. I thought it might be good just to set a foundation if you could talk a little bit about what WeWork does and how it's kind of differentiated in the marketplace. So let me go back to history a bit, only because the company is only a decade old. Uh, you know, we started in 2010. Uh, and in a way to disrupt our office space, um, it, it was the way to be Spotify versus Napster or uh, iPhone versus Nokia, as I can relate to other industries. And it was really uh, based upon the ability to create small businesses coming out of the recession, a place to go reinvent themselves with the hopes of eventually being actually a marketplace where you could support an ecosystem of small businesses uh, based upon being in a, in, a, in a similar environment. But on average, by the way, people only go to their offices 60% of the time. This seems to be a new revelation when if people reflect on their own uh, methodology of working, they would see that they actually travel quite a bit or they're off-site quite a bit. You know, I would not have guessed that your business is shifting more toward enterprise type customers and bigger businesses. Why do you think that is? Well, for multiple reasons. One is as companies scale, large companies themselves scale globally, and we're able to put them in business, you know, relatively overnight. Being in 800 locations in 150 cities around the world, we provide a lot of flexibility. Uh, and I think the word that you'll hear more and more is, uh, we look at it for our own lifestyle, right? We want to be flexible on how we want to come to work, how many days we want to come to work. So that word flexible is now very ingrained in people's mindset. And, and as they view us as a partner in that flexible space, they tend to migrate towards us. Sure. No, that, and that makes a ton of sense. And one of the things I'm, I'm excited to dig into with you is your perspectives on how how that return to work happens. But you joined WeWork as the CEO back in February, uh, only literally weeks before shelter in place orders started running across the United States. Could you ever have anticipated what happened and how has it changed your thinking as a, as a new CEO in the business on how you position it, how the world is likely to come back to work? Adversity, you know, provides, uh, is a mother of all invention, provides solutions, right? Never waste a good opportunity. You've heard all these phrases. And it truly becomes applicable when you look at a situation like us. We had a very good balance sheet. We had a very good brand, okay? Mm-hmm. We had bad press uh, because of a, you know, of a IPO that did not happen. So when you get into COVID, you are able to take a deep breath. You stop. Okay, and you start to look at the portfolio, look at the people. So we were able to streamline the organization in a six month period. Without COVID, it could have taken us 18 to 24 months. And, and so as we now start to return to work, uh, we are, are, you know, back to work since June 26 when New York City allowed us to come back in a, in a, in a, in a staged manner. Uh, one, we for sure see people are much happier back at work mm-hmm. where about 60 to 70 percent of the people come in every day i think i said this earlier people want flexibility they don't want to be sure. told to come in every day they don't want to be told when to come in and they want to have their own sense of responsibility or when they should come in uh, versus when they can work remotely you you have a situation where 60 percent of the millennials and gen z don't want to be a uh, you know zoom generation uh, Finally, you know, the world is acknowledging or the U.S. is acknowledging productivity is down 11 percent. Collaboration is down 74 percent. And I think the CEO of uh, Microsoft said today in the Wall Street Journal CEO Council meetings that effectively we need to start coming back to work. Uh, it's starting to impact uh, not only productivity, collaboration, 
onboarding culture, uh, but actually going to start impacting uh, every sure. aspect of our business besides our mental health, which is, you know, preeminent to everything we do. And, and obviously, Sandeep, you, you know, you're a leader, not only of a business in the business of office spaces and giving people an opportunity to be together, but also the CEO of a company that has a lot of employees. And but there are so many business owners and leaders who are having conversations with employees about how to come back, listening to employee concerns. How do you talk to your people? You touched on a few of these things, but how do you talk to your people about the the good parts of being back in the office so i think you got to one over communicate two i think you got to lead by example right what what very often we see is uh you know the leaders uh, are working from home okay uh and they're putting expectations on on their people to come in it, you, you have to leave yeah, it doesn't top, work okay it doesn't work Okay, uh, so you have to do that. And, and, and three, you have to make sure that you understand their reasons. Uh, and so our HR people or our, you know, what we call our people people here are overwhelmed because they're constantly dealing with situations. Uh, and, and, and we have to be rational and reasonable. And in our business, there are tens of thousands of, of salespeople. I, I think one of the hallmarks of our industry is it's a very interactive industry. And I think one of the big questions on the mind of the salespeople in the industry is when does life start to get back to normal for them? When will offices be more open to having outsiders, non-employee people? coming into the into the buildings how do you think about that in in the context of your business where you have outside people coming in in essence every day as part of the business uh, so I, I will be a little philosophical for a moment and sit back and say that the pandemic is here for a very long time we have to make proper behavioral changes we have to you know wear our masks uh, you know we have to wash our hands we've got to keep social distancing we have a good behavioral signage and 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 try to live, uh, you know, with with this. Okay. And what will happen, my belief, is it may take a few years, two, three, four years, and you'll have herd immunity because the aspect of doing it any other way uh, seems really distant unless we have a level of discipline. Uh, you know, you know, like like some of the countries in Europe or in Asia have had, right? People really do seem to, I mean, we, we've experienced in our business where our team members take it very seriously. And we have nurses walking around checking temperatures throughout the day. And, and we've added weekly testing in as an option for employees, just as another way to get at it. And, and I've been incredibly impressed with how people have embraced uh, all of those things. One of the, one of the topics I wanted to ask you about is sort of Given you've been a CEO in, in commercial real estate for, I think, north of 30 years at this point, uh, and I'm curious for your view, to a lot of business owners who are contemplating the right moves, do they, you know, do they reduce space, do they keep space, do they engage a flexible uh, partner like WeWork? What's your outlook on sort of the commercial real estate market in general? So the reason you have so much sublease space on the market today as an example is because everyone sort of sat there and took all this space, and now they sort of look back at each other and say, why did we take all this space? And I yeah. hear this all the time. I wish we had a WeWork space. We know our commitment would be 12 months and we'd be done. Uh, but I do think that there's going to be an optimization of real estate and the utilization of more flexible space, whether it's with us or any of our peers, or by the way, even existing landlords are converting some of their space within their buildings to flexible space to account for that ability of their own tenants to flex up and flex down. And I mean, it, it seems like the, the, the maybe the, the, the word flexibility in itself really is the best description of what not only office space will be, but also company approaches to having people back to work where this hybrid approach of you spend some time in the office, some time working from home becomes the, the new norm. But for sure, it seems like all of us are, are going to be more virtual going forward than we were prior to the pandemic. We're in the very casual uh, premium basics segment as a business. 
we hear from our customers that their businesses around basic apparel for uniforming have exploded because so many people are working from home. As people come back to the office, since you probably see more people coming back to the office than anybody, have you seen a shift in what people are wearing as they come back into WeWork spaces? Uh, I think WeWork is, I won't say unique that way because we've always, most of the entrepreneurs or the tech companies that lease space for money have always been much more informal in their dressing. So I think this movement towards athleisure has been ongoing for a long time. It just got accelerated, uh, you know, during this period of time. In our, in our offices, generally across all our enterprise tenants, it's a very casual environment uh, and always yeah. has been, by the yeah. way, for the last decade. So Sure. You know, you, you're uh, in a unique circumstance in that, you know, you, you still have a very substantial portion of your business made up by uh, small businesses, which we have many in our industry. And of course, we have some big enterprise businesses, too. Um, if you, based upon the things that they're asking we work for and your insight into what's important to small and medium-sized businesses, what what guidance would you give? When it's to their real estate needs, it's all flexibility. Uh, a lot of them, you know, feel very blessed. They took it with us. That hurt us because that churn went up, but it helped them, you know, live for another day. Cash is always king, right? So how do small businesses preserve cash uh, to be able to, 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 to survive? And I think the most important thing is, you know, how do you look at adversity and how do you pivot? Uh, I mean, if you're a restaurant owner, uh, thank God, they opened up the streets and the sidewalks. Sure. If you're a retailer, you know, those that pivoted to a buy online, pick up and store model, besides pure e-commerce, you know, obviously won uh, the, the battle. Uh, and so, I, you know, my, my entire life, you know, even on a personal basis, I, my favorite word is, how do you keep pivoting, right? Uh, you know, sure. and, then I, and then I joke and I always sit back and say, when you're four years old, you can bomb a ski mountain or you can go straight <laughs> down. When you're 58, like me, there's a reason they're S curves, right? Exactly. Uh, for that is there's no, there's, you know, from the beginning to the end, you need to keep turning and pivoting. And so, and I think people need to reflect back and say, in this adversity, what can I do, okay, to pivot my model, okay? And those that pivot generally make it at the other end. Well, Sandeep, thank you so much uh, for spending the time with us. I, I know the audience is going to love the conversation and uh, we'll look forward to connecting in the near future too. No, great. And, and, and thank you for having me on this call. I really look forward to connecting in the near future too. Talk about timely insights. And you provided such a valuable look into broad-based trends that will define the future of the workplace, at least for the next several years, and in ways that you can adapt. And a huge thank you to Sandeep and Ashley for sharing their insights about the future of the workplace and changing consumer uh, behaviors. But what does this all mean for you? We put together five key takeaways from today's live event. Get ready for a hybrid work model that's all about flexibility. From huge global companies to small businesses, we all want flexibility. Companies don't want to sign 10-year leases for a set amount of space. Instead, they want the ability to open locations in a new city virtually overnight or to downsize their office space depending on how their team is working together. For smaller businesses or salespeople, there's definitely a need to separate home from work. Contrary to what many may assume, 60% of millennials and Gen Zers say they do not want to be the Zoom generation. We want to collaborate with our teams and customers in person, but with the ability to work remotely at least part of the time. There's also recent evidence that companies are starting to see work from home conditions affecting overall productivity and having a negative effect on the ability to onboard new hires and grow corporate cultures. Now is the time to think about how your team will work together over the next six months to two years. What does that look like for your company? It's all about optimizing your physical space and technology to match employee needs, along with your overall mission and goals. That includes flexible schedules in space. Companies want to be able to open up their workspaces to employees to allow for social distancing and also reduce that footprint in certain locations when needed. Become the kind of leader who inspires others. 
Both Sandeep and Ashley talked about the importance of leadership, especially during times that change almost everything that's familiar to us. From the top down, it's essential to communicate early and often with your team. So ask yourself, when employees come to you with real concerns and situations, how are you addressing those while still staying true to your company's vision and goals? Sandeep also loves the idea of leading by example because it sets the stage for bringing people back into the office if you're working at home full time. How can you really set the standard for team members as they return to the office? Just putting the proper safety procedures in place, like taking temperatures, wearing masks, and social distancing is part of the equation as uh, you make your team feel comfortable. Ride the work from home wave with branded apparel and products. As we've been saying, the apparel industry felt the pandemic's effects on revenue and demand in April, but started to rebound in May. Why? Well, as we've touched on before, the trend towards casual dressing at work and at home accelerated even more this year because of COVID. Athleisure and streetwear styles gain even more fans the longer that we work remotely. There is definitely business to be won in the promo space, and companies like Gemnote that starting pitching new ideas like work from home kits early on are seeing that success. How are you looking at the ways your customers are working now and brainstorming merch solutions that enhance their lives? It's also about saying to your clients, how can we creatively use your marketing budgets to actively engage your customers or event attendees? Events may be virtual for a long time. Although companies are canceling multi-million dollar events left and right, many still have meaningful budgets to work with. Continue to reach out to customers with solutions. Many companies are switching to lower cost virtual events complete with swag packs and VIP gifts that give everyone attending a great experience from home. Gemnote showed up as a one-stop shop, a team that could curate, customize, warehouse, and fulfill the merch and gifts without their clients having to really lift a finger. Even cooler, companies that couldn't afford to host in-person events can now tap into the power of virtual with branded merchandise. So use this as an opportunity to go out there and grab new business. Lastly, focus on future growth. As Sandeep said, uh, adversity is the mother of all invention. And Ashley mentioned that growth is the cure for everything right now. Are you focusing on your company's growth or are you caught up in the pandemic a panic? Keep coming back to your company's core values and coming up with new ways to keep your team engaged and your customers happy. Okay, everyone, we'd like to kick off a Q&A with Ashley and Prab, head of global marketplace from WeWork. He's standing in uh, for Sandeep, along with myself. And for those of you who don't know or haven't been on here before, I'm Megan who see a sale for uh, Bella Canvas. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Prab. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for joining us. We saw a few questions come through uh, that we'll go ahead and get started with. Uh, but for you viewers, if you have any questions uh, for myself, Ashley, or Prob, please ask in the chat to the right or at the bottom of the screen if you're on uh, your phone. Okay, so it looks like the first question is uh, for you, Prob. Uh, do you have any advice for business owners who are thinking about what coming back to work might look like for their company? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think. First of all, all the advice that you gave was spot on in terms of how we're thinking about everything. Um, you know, we, we came back to work um, in, in mid-June, which was pretty early for office workers that we work. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the key things is just over communication because it's, it's, um, there's a lot of anxiety right now from people that have been sitting at home for a long time. Um, and, and even if it's the most safe environment in the world, they just need a lot of communication down to you know, where the sanitizer is going to be and pictures of the space. So even sending people pictures of what the new space looks like was very helpful. So I think communication over communication was very important in terms of coming back to work. Um, and then we took a phased approach. So I think starting with small groups, um, the first group were people that opted in that actually were sick of being at home that wanted to come in. And then we sort of waved people in. Exactly. And so um, <laughs> there, was, there was actually a ton of people that were like, I'm ready. Like, I'm sick of being in this small apartment. I need to come. I need to come in now. And then there were a group that was saying, like, let me come in towards the, the last wave. And so I think just really good communication and then doing it in waves is the right way to do it. No, I, I love that. I, I couldn't agree more. And I know that uh, we have a special offer for anyone watching 25% um, off the all access pass. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell our listeners a little bit more about that? Sure. So obviously, people that know WeWork know that we have um, private office space that you can buy, um, which is within any one of our buildings. But um, what we realized during the pandemic is that a lot of companies were looking for added flexibility. 
So we created something called All Access. And what that does is it allows you to have essentially a black card um, that gets you into any one of our 800 locations worldwide whenever you want to get in. And if you look at my personal situation, I live in, I live in Brooklyn um, and there's a bridge uh, that gets you into Manhattan. And a lot of people don't wanna take public transportation or don't have a car. So in that use case, even though there's an HQ in New York that feels safe, they actually don't wanna go there. So they can use the WeWork black card, come into, uh, come into uh, the space in Brooklyn for other smaller businesses, they actually want to actually completely reduce their footprint. And so they're just saying, look, I don't know how much space I need. We don't need it right now. Let's get rid of it. And what this does is it just provides you with ultimate flexibility. So each one of your employees can have a black card. The retail price is 300 a month um, with the discount. It's obviously cheaper and it allows them to just have space wherever they, wherever they want, whenever they want. So you can have some people in Brooklyn, some people in Midtown, some people, you know, in California or wherever they are. So it just provides a lot of geographic flexibility to companies. That's such a good point about mass transit being here in LA. I, I didn't even think about that, but I'm like you, the novelty of working from home wore off very quickly. So I, I can tell you that if we didn't have our office space open here, I would absolutely be at a WeWork today. So um, email uh, for, for those uh, viewers, email Bella Canvas x we work at wework.com we'll put that in the chat for you guys to get in touch with someone today about the uh the discount and then we'll also send an email for everyone today with all of those details um ashley uh this next question is from tracy uh what are some ideas that we can use to promote a t-shirt business using swag boxes what things uh can they include in uh the box yeah, so I always say you don't have to spend a lot on your swag. It just has to be quality. And also, we really focus on the design element. And WeWork does a really good job of that, incorporating great design um, in their swag. But it's design. It's making sure that it's practical. So things that people will actually use and not toss away or throw away because we don't want to contribute to more waste um, on this earth. So I think, you know, incorporating either, um, you know, like a bottle or right now what's really popular are tumblers because nobody's really commuting. I'm um, not in California, at least. Um, so tumblers that don't necessarily have a top but are just great for you know, drinking coffee or your tea in the morning. Um, and then I we're seeing a lot of like again wellness so anything that has to do with you know either um like indoor plants or something like that small air plants i think is really nice or you can have at your desk um, either at the office or in your home so those are just small ideas um that you can incorporate with apparel and they're not expensive at all i love that love the plant concept too uh, another question for you ashley what's your advice for small brands so i assume they mean probably don't have a lot of budget um, when they would like to curate items for their customers yeah i would say it's this is along the same lines which is just don't spend so much money on swag if you don't have it if you're a small business and budget constraint you don't want to blow all your cash on on swag right um so i would say Again, focusing on the practicality of the item and then also just making sure that it's designed well. You can have something that is lower cost but can look really awesome and cool if you just make sure that you spend a little bit more time on not just, you know, putting your logo on there, but can we incorporate illustrations or design elements from your brand guidelines? Like that's really important. That makes um, the brand speak to, you know, beyond just the the logo. The messaging, the story. Absolutely. Yeah, no, exactly. It creates uh, creates that feeling. It does. Yeah. Okay, uh, Prob, another question for you. Is returning uh, to the office the best way to improve uh, collaboration from your experience? What about regular small group check-ins? Um, how do you guys see businesses using the space? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, first of all, as, as you probably heard, I mean, this is like the largest work from home, remote working, hybrid working experiment that's ever happened. So, <laughs> yeah. like, every every week there's something that changes in terms of how people are learning to work. But I mean, what I see happening is that it, it's definitely, we're definitely going to move to a place where um, the way people used to work is going to change in some ways. So like, I don't think you'll have um, at least for the near future, people coming in necessarily every day, but I do think that there's going to be a return to work and it may be something where people are more intentional about why they're coming to work. So whereas you might like if you had a job, where you were just sitting at your computer all day and didn't talk to anybody. You, maybe you might as well do that at home. But when you have to collaborate with people when you're thinking about anything related to productivity, innovation, even networking, like those things make a lot of sense in person. And so I think it's about being more intentional about the times when you need to be in person. 
in the times when maybe, maybe it's just heads down work, you can actually be at home. So I think it's about, you think you're gonna start to see shifts in the way people think about their calendars. Absolutely, and finding that balance as well. Exactly. And um, let me see, uh, Ashley, question for you. You mentioned that a lot of your customers have moved from physical events to digital events. Um, what are some of your, your favorite or the coolest virtual events you've seen? Yeah, so we recently did one for Google and it was their international summit for their design team. And as you can imagine, that's probably like over a thousand people internationally. And instead of going to um, an, a venue in California where they fly everybody out and, you know, it's a, it's a huge conference for them, it's internal, uh, they sent these awesome swag kits that they, um, you know, customized and it was very much like a designer toolkit. And then they, coupled that with a lot of panel speakers, um, some keynote speakers from part of their team, so the execs um, at the, on the design team, which was really awesome. And I think with design, it's very much like an in-person collaborative experience, right? Like, you know, usually you do that in a conference room, you know, whiteboarding, um, but it was interesting to see how they use different tools within the Google suite to be able to share, you know, um, some of the, the findings this year and what they can look forward to next year. So I thought that was a really fun virtual event, which would be very much, you know, a, a conference that's in person. And for a company like that, I mean, that's a major investment. Do you know, as, as far as measuring ROI, is it is it metrics driven or is it more qualitative feedback? Because obviously everyone's transitioning to this uh, for the first time. Do you really know how they're looking at that from like, okay, this was a success, this was worth it, let's invest those dollars again in a similar way? Yeah, I think attendees is really, because it's an inter internal event, and so how they're, you know, making sure people are engaged, making sure that, you know, everybody is signing on to these workshops or these um, these speaking engagements. So I think in terms of that, they're definitely trying to measure, um, but mm -hmm. also just the of the actual kits and um, getting that experience at home versus having to go physically and travel. I think that takes a toll on a lot of people, um, especially people who are traveling internationally. So that was a really great experience for them that they could, you know, collaborate with their team members, hear from their execs from their home, right? So, so that was great. Fantastic. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, prob question for you, uh, in the WeWork space, are you seeing any new types of companies come to WeWork or demographics? And what would be an average, um, what would be an average uh, size company that you see at WeWork uh, today? Yeah, um, well, we, we actually have a solution for pretty much everything from an individual freelancer all the way up to, to, to Google and Amazon, who are all our customers. Um, so, I mean, the, the space really is is broad in terms of the average customer, but um, <clears throat> about uh, half of our membership is actually small business. Um, and um, what I've seen through COVID is a lot of different things. Um, we've seen uh, teachers looking for space uh, because they're doing virtual learning and they can't do it in their apartment. We've seen mothers that want to bring their kids to somewhere outside their space. So we've seen some interesting like consumer use cases like that. Um, we've seen companies, uh, smaller companies that are trying to just do some of that collaboration stuff, use some of those access and on demand products where it's lower commitment and they can all just kind of have a us space to collaborate in. Um, I, I think in the beginning, there was this sort of worry that small businesses were going to be completely stuck and they never go back to space. But, but I think that's not at all what we've seen. Um, we've actually seen it pretty robustly happening where small businesses are saying like, in some ways you're seeing a lot of innovation where people are starting businesses now. So um, I guess that's one small trend we've seen is that the small, the small business side of our business is pretty robust and it hasn't changed. Interesting. I think for a lot of our industry, they are small businesses. So to understand how they can really leverage and, and tap into this solution is, is really helpful. I, I Actually, think, I, oh, oh, sorry, please, no, pl please. I was just going to say for, from a small business perspective, I think the key message for, for we work is really just, like you can start very, very low. And so like, if you're in a place where you're like, I don't want to pay for a 10 minimum investment, space, yeah. it's just like start at the bottom, everything's taken care of for you. And then as you grow, you can decide whether WeWork is for you or you want to get your own space or whatever else you want to do. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Ashley. I know you had a hard stop at 1145. One last question for you. Right. I know we talked a lot about the work from home kits. Uh, what's your favorite uh, kit outside of that that you've done? 
A favorite kit. Um, I would say, let's see, that's a tough question. Um, I would say what's really popular right now are like diffusers. So we have a couple of brands, but Vitruvi sort of pops out in my mind, which is it's um, you use essential oils to put, you know, into a diffuser and yeah. then it will, you know, clears the air, makes it smell really good. Um, so, again, like working from home, at least our team is working from home. We like to use that just, again, to make sure that like your you know environment is a pleasant one. And well, wellness. And yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, very, yeah, very much so. And I think that has to do with the mental health. So our team is actually has been much more productive at home and actually working longer hours. So we're having to combat that and not having them, you know, burn out. Um, so just making sure that we're supplying them with all the supplies that they need, but also what are things that could delight them in the day and get them really mm -hmm. motivated to work. And then, you know, at night to, to sort of calm down and make sure that they're refreshed for the next morning. So yeah, a diffuser, I think it is really great. Absolutely. I love that idea. I might steal that one. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I, I, I know you have to run. Um, and Prob, thank you. Thank you both so much for your time and, and contribution to today's session. Um, for all of you viewers, uh, thank you again for tuning in. As always, we'll post a recording of this event to our website and YouTube channel so you can watch it again or share it with anyone who may have missed it. Uh, we're also working on something really exciting uh, that we're going to be ready to share in early November. So stay tuned for that announcement. We'll see you guys again soon. And thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye.